So here we are in my basement at my workbench. I have an electrolysis system set up right now and it's actually running. And I'll show you a little bit about uh, how I have this done. First thing you're going to need is a battery charger. You need to get the kind that says manual. Okay? Manual. Here's 6 amp. Here's a 12 amp. Um, do not get the newer kinds that you can find in, in the stores now that say automatic or have little lights on them that light up because they won't work. Uh, this is one, this is like the newer style here. You can see it says automatic. Don't get those, they won't work uh, for very long. They might come on and, and you'll think they're working okay, but they'll shut themselves off because they are they know when a battery's not hooked up to them. These old style are dumb. You buy them at yard sales, you can get them at flea markets, usually you can pick them up for about 10 to 15 dollars a piece. Um, and I have quite a few of them that I use. Okay, this is my setup here. Well, you can see I have the uh, battery char the chargers on. I actually have it on 10 amps right now. Needles up just a little bit. And uh, I have everything hooked up. Here's my electrolysis bath. Uh, there's a couple things you can use. Uh, this is the positive um, electrode. And I use a steel plate when I'm doing the bigger things, like the uh, artillery fragments like I have going right now. This is actually a piece off a railroad that I found. Uh, another thing you can use is flashing. You can buy this at Lowe's. It comes in a big roll. It's a little bit expensive, but it works really well. You can cut strips off, and it works great. Um, but anyway, so I have this hooked up. It's cooking right now. If you look at the water, you can see it's a little foamy. And it's actually moving on its own. You can see little currents and eddies in there. So that's how you know it's working. Okay? And what I have is uh, another way you can check too is just make sure there's a spark. You can see you got a little bit of a spark right here. So we know that's working great. And you can see where I put the screw into the plate so I get a really good connection. Um, you can see it's sparking if I just touch the plate too, but this is sure is a really great connection like that. So in here I have my cannonball fragments. Uh, what I do is I have you know the one line here, my negative hooked up to the fragments. And then I have it split off in a bunch of different leads. I got five different leads here. And all this thing is is a uh, electrical cord that I cut up into little pieces and strip down. So you know, it's really cheap to do something like this. But here's my fragments. That's what they look like now. I just put them in about an hour ago. You can see those are getting a little bit black on the edges, but they're working good. So I'm just gonna let them go. You want to make sure they're completely submerged in the solution but you don't want them to uh, touch the plate because if you do it won't work. Um, in the water here all I have is uh, just fresh water from the tap and then I sprinkle some baking soda in there. This size container I have probably I might have a little less than a cup in there, half a cup. I don't know how much it really takes but uh, if you get the bubbles and the, the water starts to move you have plenty in there. So that, that's working fine like it is. Here's one of the fragments I have drilled out. You can see I have a screw in there. That's just so I get a better connection because if you try to put the uh, alligator clips on here and put it in the water, if the alligator clips touch the water, eventually they're going to rot away. So I just use a screw. I know that's a little bit of a big screw there, but that's what I had, so that's what I'm using. Here's one of the screws. You can see I ground the tip off just a little bit and so it'll go down deeper in the middle without having to drill the hole quite so deep. Now when I'm done, I'll pull this screw out and I'll put some epoxy in there and you won't even see the hole at all. I just use a screwdriver like this to drill a hole. Here's a bunch of fragments I have on tap, ready to go in. I found these a few days ago. I don't know, you might have seen them on my Facebook page. Um, it's like, that's a Borman piece and just a neat little under plug. Something like this, what I'll do is I'll take the screw and I'll just carefully put it in that hole like that and tighten it up. That way, I don't have to drill anything in it, and that'll work just fine. So, that's the basic setup right here. I'm going to let this cook a little bit longer, probably another two or three hours, and then we'll come back and check on it again. Okay, here we go. Um, it's been about 20 hours since I was last here. I kind of forgot I had this stuff cooking, and uh, it's the next day now. But if you look, it's still going. Everything looks good. There's lots of bubbles in here. The water's still moving. If you look down here, you can see you can see the um, particulates and stuff floating around in there. Uh, these bubbles here are kind of whitish. Look pretty clean. So I think the stuff is done for sure. 
Um, if it was still a lot of uh, impurities in the iron, these bubbles would be a lot darker and be a lot, of, a lot more scum on the water. So I think we're in good shape. So I guess we should turn it off first. Bink. That should take care of that. Let's see what we have. And there they are. So that looks pretty good. They're nice and dark. And hopefully this um, stuff will break off pretty easy. Let me get my little hammer out. If you look, it's, um, to give you an idea, this stuff should chip off pretty easy now. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll work on this some and uh, show you what it looks like. When okay, I'm done. so this is what we end up with. Uh, this pile here are the cannonball fragments that I have not run through electrolysis yet. You can see they're um, still really flaky. Part, you know, pieces are coming off, and it'll continue to do that forever. These over here are the ones that I have run through electrolysis. I think they turned out pretty good. They're a little darker than um, I normally make them, but that was because I left them in too long. But you can't really even see where I drill those holes, if you look. Uh, I can't see at all where that hole was drilled in here, but somewhere in there. But yeah, it looks pretty decent, I think. Same with these. See, they're fairly smooth. I mean, they're not the best. These were land finds. And as you can tell, I mean, they were already heavily corroded. So, But I'll show you how to do uh, the wax process, which is what I've done with these already. And not only have they gone through electrolysis, but there's a hot wax process that I like to do on my iron. I'll show you how to do that, but it's going to take another video. So hang in there, and I'll try to get that done sometime this spring.